fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hey, Silver. Hey! Dan Reed, 14-year-old nephew of the Lone Ranger, sat on his horse Victor on a hillside trail watching a small wagon train making its slow and tedious way across the plain. Three prairie schooners made up the train, and as Dan watched the billowing canvas tops, he wondered what sort of people were in the wagons, from what point in the east had they come, and at what point in the great west would they settle. To Dan, the west was home. And he was always fascinated by the fact that his great open country could attract people from the big eastern cities, regardless of the dangers and hardships they invariably had to overcome in the transition. Suddenly, Dan's thoughts were rudely interrupted. Oh, back to oh, Easy, boy. Steady. Pick. I'll have to take cover. Somebody tried to shoot me. Oh, I'm too late. Better try to... Oh, oh, fella, oh, oh, there. Oh. Say, was it you who just shot at me? <laughs> Why, sure. Oh, say, you're nothing but a kid. You know what? I thought you were an Indian. That's why I took a shot at you. He might have killed me. Ah, you're not hurt, kid. Hey, what's your name? Well, steady, boy. Stan Reed. What's yours? Me? I'm Bob Ferris. Huh. Well, you're not much older than I am. Who says so? I'm almost 16, if you want to know. You don't look that old. Listen, you'll start trouble if you go around shooting at Indians. The Indians around here are all friendly. Oh, don't try to tell me. Everybody shoots at Indians. I heard all about it in Kansas City. Oh, so that's where you're from. I thought you sounded like an Easterner. Easterner? That isn't so awful far east. Hey, you see that wagon train down there? Yeah, what about it? My old man's wagon's in it. He's leading it. You're with that wagon train? Sure. Old man pulled up stakes in Kansas City because of me. I was always getting in trouble. So he thought coming out this way would change me. <laughs> he don't know it, but someday I'm going to be a second Billy the Kid, that's what. You mean you want to be an outlaw? Why, sure. As soon as I practice up enough in riding and shooting, you have to be tough to get along in the world these days. Found that out in Kansas City. See. Don't you carry a gun, kid? No, I don't. Ah, and you don't know how to shoot. Is that it? Well, I can shoot well enough, I guess, but I haven't any need for a gun, so I don't carry one. 
Right. You shouldn't carry one either. Well, this one isn't really mine. It's my old man's. I sneaked it out of the wagon this afternoon without him knowing it. Your father won't like that, will he? Ah, he's one of those mild sort of men. <laughs> I think he's a little afraid of me because I turned out to be so tough. You mean you'll really act, well, tough with your own father? Why, sure. He never could handle me. Neither could Ma. <laughs> Always preaching to me about changing my ways. But it don't do no good. Yeah, I see. I guess I better be going. My horse is getting restless. Look, Bob, you'd better not shoot at any Indian you might see. If you do, there's, there's no telling what will happen. What? <laughs> Say, I'm not afraid of the Redskins. Always said I'd like to get a shot at one. You know, kid, you talk like my old man and my ma. You should have been there, kid, instead of me, maybe. If I had a father and mother living, I'd do all I could to please them. You mean you haven't got any? No. They were killed by Indians years ago. Oh. Then you're on your own, huh? Yeah, you're sure lucky. Look, I don't like that kind of talk. Guess I'll leave now. See you sometime. Come on, Victor. Hey, wait a minute, kid. Guess I scared him. Bet he's a type that's easily scared anyhow. Well, might as well get back to the wagon train. Get up, fella. Dan attended to certain errands in a nearby town. Then at dusk, he joined the Lone Ranger and Tonto in their camp in the hills. He told them about his encounter with Bob Ferris. He acted awfully tough, and, and I didn't like the way he talked about his mother and father. A boy like that needs a firm hand, Dan. His parents probably have been too mild with him. And, too, he might have been in with a tough crowd of boys in Kansas City. Ah. Him need someone to make him do right, Kimasabi. It not good him steal father's gun, shoot at Dan. Well, oh, he really didn't mean to shoot at me. He thought I was an Indian at first. His imagination is running away with him. If he shoots at an Indian, he might start trouble. That's what I told him, but he laughed at me. Of course, he acted awfully tough, but... But what, Dan? Well, if I had to, I bet I could lick him. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Dan, you don't often talk like that. <laughs> Maybe, Dan, him get tough now, eh? No, but I didn't like the way he talked. He needs to be shown that he isn't as tough as he thinks he is. Dan, I'm sure you know how to use your fist when necessary. But uh, Bob Ferris could be shown that his boasts of being tough don't pay in other ways. Not right. Not him. He thinks he's tougher and smarter than anybody else. It's commendable, Dan, that you resent his attitude toward his parents. But a boy like that needs a certain type of guidance that his father evidently isn't capable of giving. Well, maybe so. But he even said he wants to be an outlaw like Billy the Kid. Oh? A boy like that needs to be taught that courage, a quick mind, and a quick trigger finger can be used more profitably on the side of the law. Billy the Kid would have been famous as a lawman had he been properly trained in his youth. Not right. Well... I bet nobody could teach that fellow Bob Ferris anything. They'd be foolish to try. <laughs> you really are down on that Ferris boy, aren't you? Well, let's forget him and get something to eat. Come on, Tonto. We got supper. Uh -huh. The following morning, Tonto and the Lone Ranger were riding west from their camp keeping to the shady trail that skirted the hills. Suddenly, the Lone Ranger motioned for a halt. Right up, Toto. Motion for a halt. Oh, 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 fella. Oh, fella. Listen, Toto. Ah. You hear war cry Indians, Kimasabi? Sounds like an attack of some kind. Come on, Silver. Come up, scout. Coming from down the plain. Ah. Uh -huh. Racing along the trail at breakneck speed, the masked rider of the plains and Tonto rounded the hill before them so that the plane was visible. It was then they realized the meaning of what they heard. Look, Tonto. Indians attacking those three wagons out on the plain. Ah, uh, that's not good. Get your guns ready, Tonto. You'll have to help them. Uh -huh. Swerving from the trail, the Lone Ranger and Tonto urged their mounts across the rolling prairie toward the scene of battle. Now, Tonto, let them have it. Uh -huh. The 
sight of the masked figure on the huge white stallion seemed to be too much for the Indians. With a final burst of gunfire and with ear-splitting whoops, they fled over the prairie toward the shelter of a wooded hill beyond. They're leaving, fellow. Uh-huh. Within a few minutes, the Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived at the scene and reined up near the lead wagon, where a woman was leaning over a man who lay wounded on the ground. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, big fellow. Maybe we can help, Tonto. Yeah, we try. Yeah, perhaps we can help. My Indian friend is good at caring for wounds. It, it was all so sudden. Those awful Indians. And then John was shot. Yeah, me look at wound here. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, him... Him not hurt bad. Him be all right soon. Oh, do you really think so? Uh, me fix him. Him shot in shoulder. Soon him get well. Thank heaven. We saw what you did. At first when we noticed that mask, we were sure you were going to help the Indians. I'm not an outlaw, Mrs. I'm Mrs. Ferris. This is my husband, John. We're all so thankful to you. That's right. We were glad to be of help. Well, I'd like to find out what aroused the Indians to the point of attacking like that. They're usually quite peaceful around here. I, I know why they did it, stranger. I know. Yeah, easy, <laughs> easy, easy, me fix them. It isn't too painful for you to talk, Mr. Ferris. Perhaps you'll tell us what you know. I, I feel better now. I, it was my boy, my own son, Bob. He was the cause of it. <laughs> I, I hate to admit it. But it was Bob's fault. Bob Ferris. And he's your son, huh? Yes. I've already heard about your boy, Mr. Ferris. You you heard about Bob? But how? We just come out this way. And Yesterday, uh, Bob shot at a young friend of mine, mistaking him for an Indian. He said he had sneaked your gun out of the wagon. Yes. Yes, he did. Told him not to do it again, but this morning he did, and this was the result. The result was almost a calamity for all of you. Poor Bob. I don't know what we can do with that. He ought to be punished right now. Let's pull him out of the wagon. That's where he's hiding. We'll teach that young scamp a lesson. You no. bet we will. No, wait. I'll bring Bob out. I'm sure he's sorry for what happened. Yeah, Bob! Bob, dear. Come out here. Please come out. I'll look in the wagon, Mrs. Ferris. Oh, Martha, that boy is almost more than we can handle. He isn't here, but he did leave a note. Yeah. Right? Yes, the boy's gone. He left this printed note inside. No. What does it say? He wrote, uh, I know I'll be blamed for what happened, so I'm leaving and I won't be back. Bob. Oh, oh no. My boy. Alone in this wild country. Oh, Let's trail the little scamp and bring him back. Do. I see he ought to be punished good, that's what. No. He must tell his old message. Yeah. He's an old good button, that's what. Oh, yes, wait, all of you. Don't forget he's only a young boy. He's not entirely to blame for what he's turned out to be so far. Oh, uh, what do you mean, stranger? I mean, Mr. Ferris, that your boy needs a strong hand to guide him into the right path. You haven't given it to him. Perhaps he respects strength and firmness. And you haven't shown that to him. But he's our only son, our baby. Oh, no, no, Mrs. Ferris. Bob is growing into young manhood. That's something that you both must realize. I guess we deserve what you're saying, stranger. But if if Bob was back and we had another chance, we, we might do different. Maybe you'll have your chance, Mr. Ferris. We'll go after Bob. We'll find him. And when he's ready... But not until then. We'll bring him back to you. If you only would find him. I think we can, Mrs. Ferris. No telling what a boy like Bob will do before we catch up with him. But not knowing the country, he can't go far alone. Well, mister, with the Indians aroused like they are, I don't hold out much hope that you'll find our boy alive. But if you do and you bring him back to us, we'll do what we can to turn him into the kind of a young man you think he ought to be. I promise you that. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. After promising that they'd do what they could to find young Bob Ferris, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left the encamped wagon train, and cutting sign on the youngster, they rode westward into the hills. I hope we find him before dusk sets in, Tonto. Boy of his age is bound to be frightened alone in these hills after dark. Ah, uh, if not safe. I know. Now wait, Kimo Sambi. Oh, wait. Oh, 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 scout. Oh, fella. Oh, fella. Steady. Um, look like tracks leave trail here. Go to canyon over there. Yes, it does look that way. We should set him before long. Ah. We'll ride toward the canyon. Come on, sir. Get him up, scout. Look, Kinosabi. You see, boy, I'm standing entrance to cave. Him hold gun. Yes, I see him now. Don't you come any closer, Adler. Put down that gun, Bob. We came to talk to you. Don't you come here, I said. Gun in hand, a scared young and not good, Kinosabi. It, it dangerous you go closer. Don't worry, Toto. I'm coming up there, Bob. Remember, I said put down that gun. Wait here a moment, Tonto. Uh-huh. I told you not to come closer, didn't I? Stay back, mister, or I'll shoot you. I don't think you will. I'll shoot, I tell you, I will, too. You stay away from me, you, you outlaw. I'll take that gun. No, no, give that back. You let me alone. Take it easy, take it easy, son. <laughs> not going to hurt you. All right, Tonto. Uh-huh. What are you going to do? You have a lot to learn, Bob. I'm taking you along with us to our camp. It, when you let me join up with you, you teach me to be an outlaw? I intend to teach you to be a man, Bob. I'm not an outlaw, as you think. Then I won't go with you. Oh, yes, you will. Get his horse, Toto, just inside the cave entrance. Ah, bring horse out. You can't make me go with you, mister. I think you'll come. I won't get on the horse, so it's no use bringing him out. Son, the only language you seem to understand is force. I'll put you in the saddle. Let go of me. Put me down. There. <laughs> I'll stay on that horse. We'll have to tie you on. Get him back to our horses, Tonto. It was dark when the Lone Ranger and Tonto with Bob Ferris arrived at their camp and stopped within the glow of the campfire which Dan had started. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Easy, man. Now dismount, Bob. Steady, boy. <laughs> Just a big bully, that's what. If I was as big as you, I'd show you I'm just as tough as you are. I don't claim to be tough, Bob. You sure talk funny for a man who wears a mask like an outlaw and picks on kids. Hello, Bob. Remember me? What? You're the kid I met yesterday. What are you doing here? Well, these are my friends. Well, if that mask friend of yours thinks he's going to talk me into being a sissy like you, I'd like to see him try it, that's what. Now, wait, Bob. You can't get away with talk like I that. I am getting away with it. Who's going to stop me? Listen to me a minute, son. Aren't you sorry for what you did today? You know your father's wounded because of you. Yeah, maybe my old man deserved it for all his preaching and everything. I'm not you, Bob. <laughs> Just because you're so big, you're going to get tough with me. Is that what you mean? Well, I'm not afraid of you. No, Bob. I'm not going to get tough, as you put it. I'm going to give Dan permission to teach you a lesson. Ed Runt, don't make me laugh. Show him what you know about boxing, Dan. Well, come on, I'll show you how to fight, Runt. <coughs> Maybe we'll both learn something. Yeah. <coughs> oh, I'll flatten you out. Good, that's what. Him, I fight fair, Kim. I expected that. <coughs> oh. oh, I'll get you for that, you little. You have a lot to learn. Oh. Oh, you caught me off balance. Oh, I'll show you. Oh, that one got you. You, oh, you got me down. Now you get get your... up. Oh, I'll get you for that. No kid like you can do that to me. There. I won't let you get away with this. You've just been lucky so far. I'll fix you good for that. You're not so tough. Yeah. Oh. Oh. If you want more, get on your feet. I've had nothing. All right, Dan. Go oh, wash up. A dog. Uh, yes, sir. Otto, Bob needs a little fixing up. Ah, uh, me fixing. As soon as you finish, we'll get supper. 
And uh, I suggest, Bob, that while we're getting supper ready, you sit here and think things over. After Tonto had helped Bob clean up and brought him water, the boys sat sullen and silent, watching the masked man and his companions as they moved about the camp. He secretly admitted to himself that Dan had whipped him fairly, and in spite of himself, he felt a certain amount of respect for the boy he had tried to belittle. Then, too, Bob noticed that Dan, without question, did the various camp chores assigned to him by the Lone Ranger. Soon Bob began to wonder at the fact that the boy who had whipped him recognized the quiet, firm authority of the masked man. When Dan and the Lone Ranger approached with food, Bob's expression had changed. Here's some food, Bob. You can eat it or leave it, just as you please. Here's some hot broth, Bob. It's good, too. Well, thanks. Hey, look, I... Well... You were about to say something, Bob? Yeah. I guess I've been a fool. Guess I... Well, I'm sorry for what I said about you, kid. You're all right, honest. Well, thanks, Bob. So are you. Well, and you're not mad at me? No, of course not. I... I've been thinking. I... Well, I... I guess there's more to getting along out here than just being tough. Oh, there are many men, Bob, who have little bodily strength. Yet there are better men than many who are big and strong. Because they never take advantage of another's mildness or timidity. And they respect those who have authority over them. Well, I guess you mean I'm not much good then. The way I treat my home, I mean my father. You did take advantage of his love and kindness, Bob. Because he wasn't firm with you, you decided you could be tough and get away with it. I think you've learned your lesson. Uh, I want to go back to the wagon train. I, <laughs> I want them all to like me, but they won't. They hate me now for, for everything. <laughs> Suppose we mount up and ride over there, son. I think they'll soon understand and want you to be back with them. Well, what do you say? Shall we go? Golly, you sure are all right, mister. I'm ready to go. Right now. There's the wagon train. Big fire they have makes everything almost as bright as day. Well, golly, I won't know what to say. I wouldn't worry about that, Bob. Now, we'll stop here, Hosen. Oh, 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 I don't know why we stopped, Kimasabi. You three wait here. I'm going to ride over there alone. I'll come back soon to get Bob. Ah, we wait with Bob. Good. Come on, Susan. Hosen, oh, hello. Oh, oh. Then you didn't find my boy? Maybe just as well he didn't. He's dangerous to have around. It's good riddance, eh, yeah, sir? Yeah, that's oh, right. John, what are we going to do? Our poor boy alone in this wild country? Oh, well, uh, uh, wait a minute, all of you. I have found the boy, and he's all right. Oh, Bob wants to come back. He's sorry for the way he's acted in the past. He's willing to try to change. That kid will never change, mister. You have to show me. Oh, wait. Please let the masked man talk. Bob has learned a lesson. He learned it from another boy. A boy who believes in fair play and obedience to authority. Bob is willing to try to change. It will be difficult unless all of you help him and have patience. A boy of his age can't change overnight. But take my word for it, he wants to have another chance. Will you give it to him? Bring him back to us, mister. Yes. Yes, bring him to us. Well, I say give the kid another chance. Yeah, it's all right with me. Go get him, mister. Thanks. I knew you men would see it that way. Now, I'd like a word with Mr. Ferris alone, please. All right, stranger. All right. What is it you want to say? Mr. Ferris, a lot depends upon you. Be patient but firm with your boy. I will, but, well, I don't understand Underneath how... his so-called toughness, Bob is all right. 
He realized that if a boy who could thrash him was willing to recognize authority, there must be something to it. I see. If you give Bob the proper guidance, I'm sure that someday you'd be proud of him. Now, I'll go bring your boy back. Come on, Silver. A few days later, the little wagon train had arrived at a new campsite. As Bob Ferris helped his father unhitch the team, he suddenly cried out, Dad, look, here comes a masked man with Dan and Tano. Hi there. Hello, Hello, Hello there. Hi, Tano. Hi, Golly, I'm sure glad to see you again. We came by to see how things are going. Fine, stranger, just fine. Hmm, son? Yeah, Dad. Lead the horses around the back of the wagon, son. Oh, but gee, Dad, uh, I want to stay here and talk to Dan I and Tom. take the horse, Bob. Yes, sir. I'll be right back, Dan. All right. <laughs> yeah. Come on, boy. I, I see the boy is learning fast, Mr. Ferris. Yeah, him do all right. I sure a changed lad, mister. Oh, once in a while he forgets himself, but then he seems to think of something and grabs hold again. Oh, I'm so glad to see you again. You did wonders for our boy. He's doing it for himself, Mrs. Ferris. Well, come, Dan Toto. We ride back to camp now. Oh, golly, are you leaving so soon? Yes, Bob. Someday we'll see you again. Come on, Silver. Bye, Bob. Come on, Victor. Come on, Scout. That masked stranger is so big and strong, yet there's something about him that, well, I just don't know how to explain it. I know, Mom. What is it, son? Well, he, he doesn't try to act tough. And you know what? I can tell you who he is, too. You can? Who is he, Bobby? He's called the, the Lone Ranger, Mom. And, and honest, he's the most wonderful man I could ever meet in my whole life. That's what. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger, Incorporated. 